Okay, dear friends, I just want to make a question to both of you. If you are in the aesthetic zone, you know, and there is highly aesthetic demand for the patient, and uh, the patient, the, the implant is theoretically treatable in terms of uh, treatment of perimplantitis, but you know that some recession will occur. Is this a good reason also for extract the implant because you know that the treatment outcome cannot be as good as to extract the implant and start everything from the beginning, I mean? Well, this is, um, this is a good question because this is real life problem, right? I would not make this point. So once we have a peri-implantitis lesion and we have a respective bony defect that still supports the tissue. So we do not see that many soft tissue dehiscences just due to peri-implantitis lesions. So it depends on the defect. So if the defect is... And if you already have some recession starting with... Well, when this recession starts, all we can do is, by providing soft tissue crafts, by providing any measures to keep the soft tissue at the level where it is. But we at least cannot move it upwards if there is a bone deficiency. So these are the critical cases where I would say yes, depending on the patient's demand, it may be the option to remove yeah, because it. Because it's also, I think it's very nice to think that if the implant was placed by us, yes. the first treatment choice is to treat perimplantitis. You know? Exactly. When the patient comes from someone else, I maybe the first thing that we choose is implant extraction, you know? And that means that we still are quite far from the aesthetic outcome even if it's also difficult to achieve an aesthetic outcome, yes. I mean, after extracting the implant. The case you show, it was wonderful because there was many, many implants, and in that case, it was a big problem to extract all of them. Yes. But if you have a single implant, which is fading, maybe, yes. you know, you have also aesthetic reason that could be one good reason to extract the implant. But this is what we have to assess. So the patient reported yes. outcome. The patient yes. has a completely different demand. Completely. And in these cases, so you look at, well, you are the mastermind when it comes to aesthetics. But the patient does, in many cases, not care about yeah, one yeah. or two millimeter of absolutely. recession, but he cares about when the implant is being removed. Yeah, absolutely. So the demand to keep I, I, the implant I, yeah. is so high coming from the patient. So that's why I'm following. But just in cases where I don't see a chance then we go for yeah, the removal. because there is also a psychological problem in this patient, you know, that the patient has failed. Some is, somebody promised them that it could have last forever, and so they are very, very angry. So when we get to this patient, what do you tell the patient? What's the prognosis you tell the patient in terms of treatment of perimplantitis? I would say that the most important thing is to explain the patient that the goal of a treatment is not to cover the recession, but the goal is to, to eliminate the, the infection and to keep the implant. So the patient needs to understand and that. Yeah, I think this is a very good point because also patient coming for aesthetic reason with no perimplantitis, but for bad implant placement, for example, the most important thing is try to keep the implant because they want to keep the implant. That's the first choice. They exactly. Get. Exactly. And that's why the simple statement, this is what I've heard for, for, for many years, so the only way to treat peri-implantitis is the implant removal. And this completely ignores the demand of the patient, yes. right? And I have to, that, to tell you that in my experience, what we start to publish now is that the patient expectation when you save your implant, let's say it's much less than when you remove everything. Because when you remove everything, patients are so you know, disappointed that yes. their outcome must be perfect. While if you treat the implant and you keep the implant, the patient most probably can also accept the treatment that is not ideal 100%. I think that this is something that it's very important also to be considered the expectative of our patients. And what we have seen, so that's the tricky part of peri-implantitis, we get this circumferential defect. So we lose the, bo the attachment level at the adjacent teeth. Yes. So you start yes. with yes. a massive attachment loss at adjacent teeth, and you know much better than myself yeah. that the aesthetic outcome is yeah, driven mainly also by yeah. the attachment supported yeah. adjacent teeth. So I think that a good point is also when periplantitis is close to a tooth. Yes. If there is also attach loss of attachment at the level of the tooth, you have to exactly. try to Take do it your out. best. Yeah. Take it out.
because there is no way. No way. It's also true <laughs> that there is loss of attachment and bone at the level of the tooth. There is no way to regenerate so much bone. So the problem remains still very, very complex to be solved. If you extract the implant and there is bone loss of the adjacent teeth. So, you know. But going back to your first question, now you have to convince the patient we have to remove the implant, and by the way, we remove both adjacent teeth yeah, as well. No, that's, that's, so a, that's, that's a big problem. That's we, I think that the we, still have, situation. Yeah, we still have some compromise in some situation which is good for the patient, like uh, restorative treatment, traditional or Maryland bridge, that sometimes can solve some problems that with implant therapy cannot be solved at all when you are in such a bad situation. Yes. So, I think that we all agree, yes, Definitely. that we have to do our best yes. to keep the implant unless it's the patient that has such a big, big, big aesthetic demands that yes. in this case, this could be also a good reason for, let's say, extracting the implant, even if it could be treated. And the same is for when you treat implants, which is very, very bad place. If the pa e patient don't accept that there is an increase in the thickness that it's obvious since the implant is outside of the bone, you have to increase the thickness. And so the volume of the tissue here is much more than the contralateral side. If the patient don't accept this, that's a big problem. Exactly. So we have to inform a lot the patient what is the predictability of our procedure that in this case is not 100% for sure. Yes, yes. So, it was nice. Two minutes, we have to do something else. Yeah. So at Ultra, so we, we have a little bit switched from the original perspective of um, obtaining re integration. So this is when yeah, I yeah. started 20 years back, that yeah, was yeah. my aim. In the meantime, we are mainly dealing with soft tissue yeah. outcomes. That's something I believe so much, yes. especially at the buccal aspect. I'm not so sure that we need so much bone at the buccal aspect. I think that good thickness of tissue, which can be well adherent to the implant surface once it's clean, most probably for the implant is more than enough. Obviously, interproximal bone, it's something different, so you yes. have to restore it as much as possible. But the buccal bone, it can be, let's say, in many, many situations, compensated by increasing soft tissue thickness. Definitely. In many, how many cases do we do soft tissue crafting at peri-implantitis affected sites? Without any bone regeneration, yes. you mean? Yes. Well, basically, by, in our department, whenever we have a peri-implantitis case in the aesthetic region, there's no question if we do a soft tissue grafting or not. It's a standard procedure. Yeah, yeah. And also we have data showing that reconstructive therapy also may help us to maintain the soft tissue height. So whenever possible, we also try to use the reconstructive measures. In fact, as I show in your case, your, um, the amount of bone argumentation you make at the buccal aspect is very limited. You, could, you don't have to overfill because the more you overfill, you have problems in covering with the tissue. So you prefer to fill what is, let's say, Yes. predictable to be achieved and then work with the soft tissue, which is more predictable in terms of aesthetic outcome, yes? Yes. So, so we really agree on this and that's very nice. So that's good and I know we always send you the, the most difficult cases, right? Have you ever seen cases coming from us? So this is when we stop, we send it to you. Yeah, but it's not perimplantitis. <laughs> if it's perimplantitis, I send it to you. Okay. okay. <laughs> so that's a promise in the future. That's the good okay. promise. Thank you Perfect. so much. Perfect. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you for the good. Good enough.